So I've really only looked at one alternative Discord interface, and that was cordless. And I had plenty of problems with the way that cordless worked. I thought the interface was sort of confusing to deal with, and it wasn't really the best way I felt that you could really use Discord. So today we're going to be looking at a different Discord interface. This one is called Six Chord, and it was suggested by a couple of viewers of mine. Now, I feel like even though it does have its own sort of problems, Six Chord is a much, much better application than Cordless is. So let's actually go have a look at it. So over on my main screen, this is what Six Chord looks like when you first open it up. And as you can see, the interface is already way, way less confusing than what was going on if we were running Cordless. So basically everything in this application is going to be done through commands. So there's only really a couple of key bindings, so we can move around by using the arrow keys. We can go into command mode by pressing slash. We can go into the text box down here by pressing control L. We can go into this box here by pressing control H. And there's a little bit of tab completion throughout the application. But besides that, most of the other interaction is done through that command menu. Now the first gripe I have is the fact that loading up messages takes way longer than it probably should. Everything else in the application is lightning fast. Loading messages though, and this happens every single time you try to switch channels, is going to be slower than it probably should. So let's go into my chat room and then go and select the programming chat. And I think it might take anywhere in the realm of 20 to 30 seconds to load the messages. Let's see if I can drag it out to the point when it's actually loaded because I don't know why it takes so long. I have never seen a Discord client that takes this long just to load the messages. And once the messages are loaded, there are no problems with anything else. It's just loading the messages. So for whatever reason, maybe it has something to do with the API they're interacting with or something to do with the way the application is written in the back end. But this one part of it takes a while to load. And as you can see, it's now loaded up. Now, one thing that is very, very different to the way that cordless works is the colors of people's names. I think cordless would like assign random colors if people had colors. What this one does is actually uses the color associated with that role. And, and what that means is that this application actually has true color support. Now, you can go and disable the true color support if you don't need it. But if you do have a terminal that does support it, I would recommend using it. Before we go and look at the commands, there's a couple of extra things I need to go over. So one of the big things about using Discord is sending emotes. So the way that you go and send an emote is very simple. All we have to do is write in colon, and then as you're going to see, if we start typing in a name for an emote on my server, so like Konata Think, if we then press enter on this, that's then going to go and fill that out. If we go and send this, and then look in my graphical Discord window, as you're going to see, that worked exactly as you'd expect it to work. And unlike cordless, if you want to go and select a previous message, it's not as easy as just scrolling up to where that message is located because you can't actually go and select something normally in this window. The way that you go and do this is a little bit funky. So what you have to do is press tilde, and this is going to bring up a menu that lets you go and select a previous message. And what it also lets you do is view images. So if we go and scroll up to this one, as you can see, it's displaying an image on my screen. And the way that this is being done, as you might know, my version of Alacrity, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to work properly with W3M images, even though other people say they work. The way this image is being shown is through a system called Sixel. And from what I've noticed, Sixel works on far more terminals. It doesn't work on every terminal, but it seems to work just fine in Alacrity. So this menu will let you view images and it will also let you go and actually reference previous messages. So let's say we want to select this one right here. And if I go and press enter on this, that then goes and gets the ID for that message. And when you want to do things like run a command on a specific message, you're going to be using the tilde a lot. So moving on to the commands, there's quite a few of them. The first one we have is the go to command. So go to is basically going to let you jump to a different channel in any of the service that you're in. So let's say we want to jump to something like say Chattanomics. So that's over in the library nomic server and we press enter on that. Basically it's gonna go and try to load the messages up in that server. Now obviously, as we saw before, this is gonna take a long time. So I'm gonna cut back to when that's actually done. And this seems to be the perfect time to try out the react command. So if I just go and run slash react, as you see, it requires a message ID and an emoji string. So if we just tab complete this and then pass in the ID for this previous message right here, and then let's pass in the emoji 100, and just press enter on this. And as you're going to see, nothing actually happened because it didn't go and actually update the screen. So the easiest way to update the screen is just try to scroll up a little bit. And as you're going to see, now we have the reaction on there. 
So if you need to type out a message that isn't going to fit in the box down here, because maybe you need to have multiple lines or something, what you can do is run the slash editor command, and that's going to open up your basic text editor and let you write a message in there. So that's going to work exactly as you'd expect it to. And I presume if we don't save this file, then it's not going to actually save the message. It seems like the application may have crashed when we tried to do that. Okay, apparently if you leave no message in there, it's just not going to work. There are also commands for modifying your nickname, status, and also your presence. So if we just do slash nick, that's going to let you change your nickname in the current server. If you do slash status, that's going to let you change your status from being online, busy, away, or invisible. And if you do the slash presence command, basically what that's going to be is whatever you're playing or whatever you're listening to. So you could set it to things like, I'm listening to Spotify, I'm playing various games, things like that, which I don't think you could do in cordless. I might be wrong there, but I don't think you could set this value inside a cordless. So if you realize that you made a mistake in a previous message, you can go and edit it with the slash edit command and then pass in either the ID of the message or the number of messages ago that you made that message. So I'm just going to do the ID just because it's a little bit easier. We'll pass in the tilde and then go and select the first message. And then if I press enter on this again, it's going to let us go and edit that. I'm just going to change the emoji to being a different emoji. So let's change this over to whale thonk. And this one right here, go and send this. And as you can see over in the graphical discord client, the emote that I sent is now different. And we can go and delete the message by just doing the slash delete command. And once again, passing in the ID for the message. So we'll use the tilde and then we'll select that message there, press enter. And there we go, the message is now gone. If we go over to the graphical Discord client, the message is no longer there either. And a command that's really useful because of one of the other problems the application has is the slash copy command. So what copy is going to let you do is copy the contents of a previous message. So if we go and pass in the ID for that one, we'll copy the message that was sent from Atom Toast. And let's go and paste this in a web browser. As you're going to see, that copies the contents of the actual message. Now, the reason why this is useful is... One, you can't actually go and highlight anything in the actual client. And two, is that there's no way to actually open a link. I don't know why there's no way to open a link. It seems like a really weird oversight. So basically what you have to do is go and copy the link and then paste it into like a web browser into MPV or something like that. But there is a command to actually go and upload a file. And the way you do that is with the slash upload command and one thing to keep in mind with this is that you can't go and use a tilde to represent your home because tilde is obviously being used for something else in this application. So what you have to do is put in the full file path. So if we do slash home slash Brody slash pictures, as you're going to see, we can then go and select exactly what we want to pass in. But just keep in mind that you can't just do tilde to represent your home. You have to do the entire path. And the last three commands we have work basically in the same way. So we have the DM command, which will let you start up a new direct message. We have the block command, which is pretty self-explanatory. And we have the unblock command. So if we wanted to unblock someone, all we would have to do is go and pass in the name of their account. So in this case, let's say we wanted to unblock, for example, hum. So as you can see, it's going to let us tab complete this. And then we would just run this command. And then his account would be unblocked. And if it wasn't clear by the fact that there was a command for it, yes, you can go and send direct messages in this application. If you go and select the direct messages from the server list on the side here, this is going to list out everyone that you've started direct messages with. So basically this works in the exact same way as any sort of channel. I believe all of the regular commands also work in there as well. So that should be pretty much everything this application can do. But there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is how you actually log into this actual client. So there's two ways you can go about doing it. The first one is actually putting in your regular Discord login credentials, so your username and your password. This method isn't really recommended because every single time you try to open up six cord, you're going to have to re-put in your login credentials, which is going to be really, really annoying to deal with. Plus, you're just writing them out in your terminal, which obviously isn't really something you should probably be doing. So the recommended method is using your authentication token. And the way that you get this is sort of sketchy, but it works, I guess. So what you're going to want to do is go over to a Discord client that you're actually logged into, whether that be the regular graphical one or the web client. And what you're going to do is press Control shift i And that's going to bring up the Electron developer tools. So what you're going to want to do in here is I would recommend just typing something into Discord and then going and actually selecting that message from the networking tab. And 
And then inside of there, you're going to look for a variable called authorization. And what you're going to do is take the value for authorization and then stick it into your configuration file. So I'll show you where that actually goes. Okay, so if we go into our .config folder, so this folder right here, and then go into the 6 chord folder, and in here, you're going to need to make a file called 6 chordtoml Now, the default configuration file will be available on the GitHub. I don't remember if it generates this for you. If it doesn't, go and just download it from the GitHub. But you're only going to need to change one value in here anyway, and we're going to be changing the token value. So token equals, and then in the quotation marks here, just dump in the value for that authorization token. So you might be saying, isn't doing that really insecure? And the answer to that question is yes. So if you have something like the GNOME keyring installed, this does have integration with that. I don't think there's any integration with any other methods. So basically, if you don't use the GNOME keyring, you have to stick the authorization token in the configuration file, which isn't a great solution, but it's just a Discord account, so it's not really that big of a deal for me. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. So I think this is a really, really cool Discord client, and I'm really bothered by the fact that it takes so long to load in the messages, because if it didn't have that problem, it would basically be an almost perfect Discord client. The only other thing I would want from it is being able to open up links without having to go and copy them. That's the only other thing I could possibly want. Besides those two things though, I would say this is so much better than cordless. I find cordless to be really confusing to use. And this one, I basically just picked up and I felt like I was just using regular Discord. So maybe that's not gonna be a advantage to you. Maybe you do want a different experience from the regular Discord client. But if you just want a terminal experience of the regular Discord client, this is probably one of the better options. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I'd like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montazar, Joseph, Peter D. Rowe, Tony Donald, John Merrick, Mikel Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below and a bunch of other links in my coin tree as well. So check that out because it's, it's much easier than having 20 links in my description. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech Over T, available on Library and YouTube for the video version, and the audio version available basically anywhere you can listen to audio podcasts. Also remember to go check out this channel available on Library, BitChute, and BitChute if you're watching it on YouTube, because I want those platforms to grow. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.